the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get your free financial survival toolkit and find out where to buy gold and silver safely at great prices. Sign up at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. 1490 WGCH. This is Kerry Lutz, and you're listening to the Financial Survival Network, which is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been in business selling gold since 1990, and I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. To find out more, go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080 and get a free quote. I know you've been wondering what's really happening on the ground in Greece and Europe. I have been. Information in the mainstream media is spotty, consisting mainly of shocking headlines and videos and little substance. We've got Professor Nick Economides on the ground in Greece. He's a professor at NYU who's been calling the euro crash or dissolution for years now. Professor Economides, welcome to the Financial Survival Network. We're honored to have you on. Oh, uh, thank you for having me on. Yeah, well, we're, we really appreciate you taking time out from uh, your busy day. And, you know, we hear about a lot of turmoil going on in Europe, especially in Greece. We saw riots, videos of riots earlier in the year. What's your general read on things being on the ground and interacting with people there? Yeah, well, very calm on the ground and uh, no riots, uh, everything is uh, great. I mean, it's very hot in Athens today, uh, but people are, um, you know, okay. I mean, they don't seem to be very distressed as it appears many times in the United States. It appears as if Greeks are very distressed. They don't look that way to me. I see a lot of people at the beach. Uh, people have uh, some of their incomes. Uh, some of the people have their incomes reduced, uh, maybe 15 or 20 percent in the last uh, two years. But a lot of people are relatively happy. I mean, they are not. Um, we don't see a, a situation of uh, tension or demonstrations or uh, riots or anything like that. I think it's a pretty calm uh, environment. And uh, actually, after the recent elections, the last couple of weeks I've been here, I've seen more and more. Uh, tourists uh, arrive in Greece because I guess they realize that things are, are okay, things are calm now. Right. And what's your opinion of the newly constructed uh, government there, the newly elected coalition government? Um, well, I mean, I have to see what they're going to do. Uh, the government is going to introduce the parliament later on today. Uh, it's... Um, declaration, which positions, what it's going, it's going to do. I hope that they will uh, uh, take uh, radical measures to reduce uh, the public sector expenditure, uh, one, and two, to uh, collect the existing taxes, I mean, not impose new taxes, but uh, collect the existing taxes from those that have a tax liability, and third, to... Um, introduce some new measures uh, to uh, have new investment uh, in Greece because Greece has now been in a recession for five years. It's a severe recession. The best way uh, is for Greece is to have more investment to get, to get into a recovery um, situation. So politically, it's hard to say how um, um, strong the government is going to be. It's a coalition of three parties. So that um, kind of... Um, on the one hand, means that uh, it has a lot of votes in the parliament. On the other hand, it also means that you have to take into consideration the positions of three different parties. So that has um, certain strengths and certain political um, weaknesses. But I think that there has been an agreement among these three parties that there is going to be an implementation of uh, the basic terms that Greece has agreed with its lenders. And I expect that this is what's going to happen. Uh, there will be some renegotiation of some terms with the um, uh, with the lenders, but I don't expect uh, to be this renegotiation to be to change the terms a lot. I don't expect it to be extremely substantial. 
Right. So we hear that there's been a quiet bank run taking place in the Greek banks. Uh, 650 million euros a day at one point were fleeing the system there. Is that still taking place to your knowledge? Uh, no, I think that has been actually reversed. Uh, as uh, we're coming close to the election, uh, there was some significant probability that the left-wing party might get uh, to be the first party and might uh, form a government. Uh, if that were to happen, uh, Greece would be doomed. I mean, we, they would go out of the euro, go to the draft, and so on. So a lot of people took their money then, before the elections, out of the Greek banks, as long as the currency was still convertible in, in euros, thinking that, well, there's some chance that the left is going to get elected. Um, but uh, what has happened after the left was not elected uh, in the uh, elections two weeks ago, that the significant amount of money has come back to the bank. Um, not all of it, actually. I think a substantial amount of money is uh, either gone abroad or hidden, you know, under the mattress, or who knows where, uh, in, in the houses of the population. Uh, so people are still hedging, but the bank run is over, and some money is getting back into the banking system. Well, here's the thing, though. Um, the debt that Greece has undertaken over the years, the government, the Greek government, not necessarily the country, but the government, pretty much became unsustainable and it doesn't appear that it can be serviced even at this reduced rate. What's the final outcome? Is it a, uh, just a general default, a selective default? What's going to be with the debt? Well, I think uh, what, that depends crucially on uh, whether Greece is able to get uh, to growth uh, in the next couple of years. Um, if Greece starts growing, then uh, its tax base also uh, gets enhanced, and there will be more money to collect and more money to pay the creditors. Um, if Greece remains in recession for two or three more years, then it won't be able to meet um, its obligations. Uh, if it does get to development, then it will be fine. It will meet the obligations. Now, what will happen if it doesn't meet the obligations? Then it will have to go to... Uh, the creditors, and these are mostly official creditors, that is the EU and the IMF, uh, the EU countries and the IMF, and tell them, look, I mean, we won't be able to service all our debt. What can we do about them? There might be a new haircut. But I do believe that this is not something of the present. We're talking about something that might happen three, four years from now if the Greek economy does not recover. Uh, right now, there are good chances that the Greek economy is going to recover. Uh, in the next two or three years, so then that will not be needed. And somehow I don't think it's kind of a, at the horizon, either for, the, for Greece or for the EU partners. So, so in other words, you believe that uh, Greece will stay in the euro and that the euro is going to hold together? Uh, I think that Greece, as long as the euro holds together for, you know, based on uh, whatever else is going on in Europe. As long as the euro still exists as it is now, uh, Greece is very likely to stay um, in the euro. Uh, the, the disaster that's going to happen in Greece if it leaves the euro is so catastrophic, so terrible, that Greece will try extremely hard I think, to stay in the euro. Uh, now, there might be other forces that create problems for the existence of the euro. Um, for example, if um, a large country like uh, Spain and Italy, or Italy, um, becomes, uh, requires a bailout, and the ESM, EFSF funds are insufficient, um, those problems might make the, the euro fall apart, but then it won't be so much Greece, it will be other forces. And I did hear the Finnish, uh, one of the Finnish ministers, or maybe the prime minister, say today that they're thinking of uh, possibly leaving the euro. Uh, so these are kind of other forces that, you know, are, are negative on the euro. But I don't think the euro is going to fall apart because of Greece, or at least in the next couple of years, as far as I can see. So, so Greece's debt is manageable in the scheme of things. It's not uh, overwhelming. 
but Spain's and That's Italy's right. Spain's and Italy's debt is potentially overwhelming, and at some point, uh, I think uh, everybody has to look at the debt and say, for all countries in the world, that it's unsustainable. It can't be paid off. You either inflate it or you get a haircut. You reduce it in some way, some means of default slash forgiveness, because in the final analysis, there's just too much of it. And obviously, that's going to have an impact on banks and sovereigns around the globe. Yeah. But yeah. really, really well, is- I, I think that I think that it might be a solution, which is to, to create a common obligation bond, the so-called uh, euro bond. Um, that is a possibility that there's going to be a pooling of the risk. But the countries that have good ratings right now will never do that unless they have more control over uh, the budgets of the weaker countries. So I don't really expect that uh, Germany will... Um, allow the issuance of euro bonds unless they're pretty sure, unless the Germans are pretty sure that um, Greeks or Italians or Spaniards are not going to squander their money. <laughs> so that means that they will want more control over the budget. And that might be a solution, um, a solution without haircut, that there's going to be a pooling of the risks uh, Euro bonds are going to come in existence, possibly with some short-term um, issues like um, notes and bills, and later on with two years and five years and so on issues. Um, so that's a possibility, but in, in my opinion, not a bad possibility. But it would require an amendment of the European treaties, and it would require um, central centralized collection of uh, of taxes and and, and so on. Um, so it's a possibility, but uh, it has its, it is kind of difficult. Yeah, I mean, at some point the Germans are going to just say enough here because they're shoveling all this money in, the debt's not going down, and the problems aren't going away either. So is pan-Europeanism the solution, or is it uh, some other means of of reducing this debt and you know, reducing it to sustainable levels because the levels both in the U.S. and in uh, Western Europe and in other parts of the world are, are really out of hand, aren't they? They're very high. Um, well, the U.S., uh, because of the stimulus package, uh, uh, increased the debt very significantly. And there is, there is a hope that over the next decade or so, uh, we will see a reduction uh, of the debt or maybe the economy is going to grow so fast that, uh, that the debt to GDP ratio is going to diminish. Um, but I think, you know, as far as Europe is concerned, we don't know what's going to happen. There are possibilities of managing the debt, maybe through the issues of um, um, common liability bonds, pooled risk bonds. Um, but also there is a possibility that the debt is, might be monetized, like essentially the ECB taking most of it. Um, not a great solution, in my opinion, but it's a possibility. There might be also the possibility of shoving it around, moving it around, giving it to the banks and seeing what happens. There are all these possibilities that are, being, that are on the table. Um, and we, it's hard to predict which one is going to be the, the solution especially because you need so many different countries um, to agree uh, on on the solution. It's not just an issue of uh, Germany and France. I mean, you have 17 countries that need to agree, and that's such a hard problem to solve when you have so many different interests. And, and uh, we got to get going, but just one final question, Professor. What about the role of gold in stabilizing currencies around the globe? Does it have a role? Well, I'm not so sure. Uh, gold has become a, a speculative commodity these this days, so its old uh, uh, function as a stabilizing factor uh, has uh, diminished, uh, at, at least that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, hey, 
reasonable opinion. Well, Professor, we appreciate your coming on the Financial Survival Network. If people want to listen to this interview and others with us, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. To find out more about you, Professor, and your work, where can they go? Yes, uh, they can go to my website. It's uh, www.stern, that is S-T-E-R-N, dot N-Y-U, dot E-D-U, slash network. That's my website, www.stern.nyu.edu slash network. And they can see uh, my most current research uh, online. We appreciate your coming on. <laughs>